We're here at the uh, Australian Rowing Championships. Steve War is about to give a speech to all the athletes who are still in contention for the Beijing Olympics and those who have been selected on the Australian team. Uh, I have Liz Kell here, 2006 world champion in the double skull. She's been selected in the women's eight and also Ben Cureton who's been selected in the men's lightweight four. I'm going to pass over to Liz. So Steve, um, I'm just wondering for an Olympic Games, I mean you you train every year or we train every year to reach the world champions um, and you know winning there is pretty a, a big deal. Is it is it that different at the Olympics because that's like the pinnacle of our sport and um, I guess going to it, is it, is it that different to any other regattas or sporting events? Yeah, look, it's, it's probably a little bit uh, similar to cricket when we had the World Cup every four years. Um, I mean, we were judged on how we performed at the World Cup, so there's a bit of extra pressure. But I think the trick is to sort of not put that on a pedestal, the Olympics, because um, it really is the same as any other event. Obviously, if you win it, the rewards are much better. But um, you don't want to try, you don't want to change the way you train, the way you think, your processes. So I think it's the little things that add up to you winning, not so much um, focusing too much on the outcome. So. I think it's pretty much the same. There are big events and there's a lot at stake and uh, and you know if you win a gold medal there's great rewards but I think the way to do that is to have the same processes that you've always had. So don't change your preparation. Good question, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, a question I'd like to, to ask you is obviously playing cricket for a long time, you know, probably in excess of 15 years, I don't know. Yeah. But um, how did your attitude towards um, the game and training and stuff change over that long period of time like young guys are pretty gun-ho and sure. you know and, yeah. and uh, you know perhaps if this were my last Olympics and you know you've been doing it for a long time and you think about retirement afterwards how do you still keep that sort of intensity in your training? Yeah, I think you get a little bit smarter about the way you train I know that uh, when I first started playing cricket we weren't really fully professional so it was a different era and when I finished playing cricket it was totally professional I mean uh, my first tour to England you know it was yeah, how many cans of beer can we drink on the way over? I think some one of the players drank quite a few. That's well documented. Uh, my last tour to England, uh, we didn't touch alcohol. It was, it was just water the whole way. So the thing, it can completely changed around. But uh, I'd played cricket for 18 years professionally. Um, I think the key is towards the end of your career is to train smarter and you know how to prepare much better and you know what, what works for you. So it's not so much about what everyone else is doing. It's about how you can prepare yourself best to get the best results. And of course, after a long time, it's, it's always pride in your own performance. I mean, that's what kept me going, that I wanted to do the best I could possibly do. And I didn't want my standards to drop below what I knew I could achieve. So it's, it's about training smarter, but also making sure that you're the best prepared you can be. Thanks. No worries. Oh, well, I was going to say, I was going to say, um, um, so you've obviously um, played in pretty different countries before. Um, this is the first time we've actually um, having to travel to a country other than Europe to to race. Is there anything you can sort of tell us how to sort of prepare for a country with pretty different cultures and different food, different ways of life? Yeah, look, I, I don't think it's going to be too much different these days in professional sport. I mean, when I first went to India and Pakistan and Sri Lanka, that was 20 years ago, and it was a, a real culture shock. And, uh, and the cricket tour is a bit different. We're away for six weeks to three months, so we've got to get out and have a look at the place because you go stir crazy sitting in a hotel. I think, from what I've been told, the Olympic Village, there's, there's plenty happening there, and I don't think it's a, a bigger change as, as what we'd experience as cricketers. But, um, yeah, there is... I guess that um, potential to feel a little bit out of um, uncomfortable because it's a different place. I think you've got to get into the culture a bit. You've got to sort of try and meet the people, maybe learn one or two words, which helps. You know, people always like to, like to see you sort of um, speaking their own language, at least trying anyway. So um, it's about getting in the spirit of things. And if you're going out and having a look, if you've got a chance to sightsee, but really, it's uh, it's about not changing too much what you used to. Uh, particularly, you guys, uh, your professional athletes, as cricketers, were a little bit different. But we used to like to go out and have a look at the, the place and get out in the streets. And for me, it was about taking photos and doing a bit of writing. So, uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue for you guys. Thank you very much for that, Stephen. Good luck with the talk tonight.